Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Lesky. This is my YouTube channel. I wanted to share a story that I've, I've kind of brought up before. For any woman or man or woman who tends to choose the wrong kind of man or woman, if you're a man, and you are having a hard time getting out of the cycle, okay? And it really is a cycle because humans are pattern seekers. So you will tend to, if you don't correct it, find yourself with a type of man and it doesn't work out. They're not a good match. They're not a good person. They're not a good partner. They're not good husband material, whatever, however you want to define it. But you become comfortable with that. So you seek it out, even accidentally, as a part of the pattern recognition and easy way, comfort able. They are able to bring you comfort. Not that they bring you ease, but they are familiar in the pain that they bring. And typically this is because you are dumb, because you're a person, and us humans have a tendency to try to correct past woes of relationships with new people. And the first person that typically uh, typically hurts us is our parents. And even if you have great parents, it seems like everyone has something that they hold um, their parents' feet to the fire for. Some are far less egregious than others. Some parents have harmed their children emotionally or they've neglected them or whatever it is. And this trauma stays with the person unless you really uh, seek out the therapy or do the work to heal, you won't. You'll just grow up and you'll think that because you grew up, now you're healed. So now you can move on and have a happy adulthood. And that's not what happens. What happens is you find a partner who, in your estimation, reflects the harm that the parent who harmed you the most did. Okay, so what I mean by that is if you have, if you were neglected and you're, and you're a man and your mother neglected you and when she did pay attention to you, she was kind of mean and bossy, you have an inclination, unfortunately, to go for a woman as a, as a physical romantic partner who neglects you and when she does pay attention to you she berates you and tries to take charge because that's your comfort level have you ever met someone who as soon as you meet them you have this instant attraction and it feels like you've known them for ever you have not a hundred percent not a psychologist but I'm usually right and if you look back at any failed relationships and if you think hard, you'll probably be able to find some harm or some shitty things about your ex that align very well with a parent. Okay. So unless you, okay. And that is your, your comfort zone. And a lot of children had a very uncomfortable childhood. So what are they going to look for? A partner that makes them comfortable? No, they're going to look for someone who makes them uncomfortable. Which, the, which to them is comfortable. So, wow, that was four minutes of you going, holy shit. So, how do you get out of it? Well, like I said, you can go to therapy and there's probably tons of really, really clever ways, but I'm gonna tell you what I did. I typically chose men who were not that into me. Who were not that into me. There is a plant called the mother-in-law tongue and it says, like for the care instructions, it says thrives on neglect. And I always said, oh, that's me. Like that's the kind of plant I am. I just saw that. I'm probably more like that. That's an orchid. It's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass. But anyway, I would go for that kind of man. Now, I was in fine dining forever and what I, when I was waiting on in fine dining, you have a lot of couples and a lot of celebration and a lot of uh, people who are not struggling, you know, they're uh, doing well in life. So typically I always thought that those kind of people have their shit together more. And that's kind of true actually. But anyway, 
couples would come in and I would be so, I, I want to say jealous, that's not the word, but mm, I guess like slightly jealous. I wanted what they, what they had. And it was typically a man and woman who, at least on the outside, and you can be, you can be bitter and you can think the worst in life and leave it in the comment section. But typically these people, I'll take them for how they acted, were in love and they would be into each other's stories and the woman would listen and the man would love her and and sometimes the man would order and she would just be happy with it and he would give her a compliment and she would say, I have the best husband ever. And I was like, holy shit, this looks really good. This looks really good. But whenever I would, if I happened to find myself on a date with a man who I got the sense would treat me like that, I was very repelled. Why? Why? Because that's out of my comfort zone. I'm absolutely uncomfortable with the idea of someone putting me as an important, as an important person. I say this in almost every video, but Groucho Marx and someone else credited this saying to someone who wasn't Groucho Marx, but I thought Groucho, it was Groucho Marx who said, I would never be a member to any club that would have me as a member, right? Like if you are dumb enough to put me in your club, I'm like, I don't want to be a part of that club. And that's kind of how I saw men who would, who would treat me well. Like, oh, if you're going to treat me that good, then you're a fucking idiot. You are so dumb. I don't want to be with somebody so dumb. It's kind of unhealthy. Right? So what did I do? And by the way, do you feel, women in particular, well, I guess I'm sure some men feel like this, but w have you felt like this ever? So what I did to cure myself was I would go out on a date with myself. I, I say like every Friday, we'll call it every Friday. So I would sit in a chair and imagine what a date would look like that I with a man who I wanted to be with but felt uncomfortable around. I'd go through the whole experience of him being kind, pulling out the chair, being nice, and all these things. And there are so many times that I wanted to ditch out on the fantasy. Just like in my video, Deathbed Meditations. When I was on my deathbed, in my meditations, and I'm gonna die in like three, two, one. I wanted to crawl out of that fantasy because it was so real. I hated it. I hated the experience. I don't wanna die in three seconds and I wanted to give out of the fantasy, but the, the force of the fantasy is what is the point. You know, it's going through those those deaths. So the same thing is going through that uncomfortable date and then dissecting like, why did I want to not see that guy again because he was so kind? So I had to start etching a new pathway for a new connection for a neuro connector. So when I actually had the date with the man who actually gave a shit, there was a connection there that was comfortable enough for me to have a second date and a third and to go on instead of wasting my time and a man's time, a good man's time on an actual date that I'm going to uh, decide to not see him again. I'm going to waste my own fucking time meditating, trying to figure out how to get my brain wired correctly. Okay, so that's what I did. And uh, those imaginary dates got less and less comfortable. And then I started to put two and two together. You know, my husband and I did a thing uh, last year, two years ago, two years ago, where we agreed that we would wear nice clothing every time we left the house if we were going to be gone for more than 30 minutes. Okay. And we went out for brunch, a quick story. We went out to brunch and I was facing away 
from the entranceway, and the entranceway was behind us, and there was a eight top of women over here. That means eight women out for brunch, and my husband is across from me, and he has on a sport coat, and I have on a dress, and I'm getting cold. And he sees that, and I don't ask, and he says, do you want my jacket? I said, yes, please. So he gets up, and he puts his jacket on me. He says, I'm going to use the restroom because brunch is over. We're done. I said, fine. So he uses the bathroom, and he comes back. And he said, are you ready? And I said, yes. So I took the jacket from me and I put it on him. I always suit him up. I always put his jacket on him. And he put his hand on the back of on my back. And we walked out. And he always puts me on the inside of the sidewalk when we're walking. So he's by the traffic and I'm on the inside. And we go. And he said to me, Jennifer, did you see those women? No. He said, well, when, when I got out of the restroom, my husband, he said that even the women who were facing away from us stopped. They all stopped their conversation and they all craned their head to watch the exchange of what happened. Me putting that coat on him, us getting ready. We go outside, arm in arm, off we go. And I said to him, I wonder, I hope, if there's any woman in that group that thought, hmm, that looked nice. That man put that coat on her when she was cold. And then she puts that coat on him. And I, I wonder if it looked nice to any woman and it brought to the imagination of said woman, imaginarily, well, I've never considered putting a jacket on a man. And then I wonder if it would open up her mind in any way and go, hmm, I've never considered a lot of things about how to be chivalrous to a man who I can't one of my commenters hates when I say chivalry he said it's the knight's code something like this and chivalry is something that men do to women but I, I disagree I think women can be very very chivalrous to men putting a, a coat on for him opening the door from the inside waiting for him I mean like l living as if he exists and he's really important so the reason I tell that story is because, okay, so I was talking about, man, the things you have to do. Oh, the reason I tell that story is because in those meditation dates, there were things that occurred to me about if I want this from a man, the, well, Jesus Louise, in exchange, I'm going to have to do this because these two things work together, such as if I want a man who's going to say, oh, Jennifer, you're cold, here's my coat, then I, in exchange, will be the kind of woman that puts the coat on him. If I want this, I have to do that. And then when I got, and the thing is, is that was always in me. Like, I really like to be kind, but I was very uncomfortable with that, um, the dance backwards, like reciprocity. And, and after I did this, I spent this time, and I would journal too about, about stuff, but after I spent this time in these meditations, who was the next person that I dated? It was my husband, you know? And he was, <sighs> and I was even still a little uncomfortable because I knew he was exactly what I wanted. And what kind of a man would choose me? Oh, 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 I had done the work and the meditation so I could, the neural connector was just imprinted enough where I could work through in reality without hurting him or, or me and come into the cohesive relationship that I have now. I don't know the last time I just blabbed well, it was probably just a couple months ago. But that is my suggestion for anyone who finds that they struggle or that they're choosing the wrong kind of man. Because, wow, I hear so many women. You, right now. Sarah. Do I, wouldn't that be funny if there's a Sarah right now? Like you had just prayed, like, show me what to do. And then, and then you see this a woman who you've never seen before. And Ken and John, you know, all of you watching that are single, who don't want to be single, 
then there's a lot of you who watch who want to be single and you you get so mad at me for existing saying out loud what I'm what I'm saying as you come to my channel you're so silly so silly so I hope that helps somebody and if it didn't then you know <laughs> I can't do nothing about that you just wasted your time so let me know what you think. Uh, do you have any tips or tricks to get out of the cycle of repetitiously trying to repair a relationship that is super shitty from a childhood? Or getting out of the habit of being uh, attracted to the same type and pattern of man because you're a pattern seeker, pattern seeker, pattern seeker, same, 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 same kind of shit, same kind of shit, over, over, over. How did you get out of it? All right, let me know. I can't, I can't wait to hear about your experience. Okay, everyone, be well. Bye.